Okay, somebody said that you had glaucoma. You're here because you may or may not. We're going to talk with Dr. Shah just about that. How is glaucoma diagnosed? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Sonia Shah. I'm one of the physicians and glaucoma fellows over at Wills. And I wanted to talk about how glaucoma is diagnosed. Right here. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We did it. Yeah. All right. So this is tough because I know you guys have been here all day hearing about what glaucoma is. And you ask one of us, what is glaucoma? We don't actually really have a straight answer. There's a lot of different things that go into diagnosing glaucoma. So you might have a high eye pressure. But some people with normal, what we consider normal eye pressure, can still have glaucoma. What we normally look at, at is the nerve of the eye, which I'll show you a picture of later, how it connects the eye to the brain. And if that nerve is damaged, then we think, OK, maybe there's more likely that you have glaucoma. We also can see glaucoma gives you problems with visual function, that day-to-day -day stuff. It's hard to read. It's hard to see. Uh, and or someone may have glaucoma just because we think you might develop any of this stuff, but you don't have it yet. So when you have a heart attack, God forbid, or you have asthma, you have symptoms. You can feel it. There's, there's pain. You can't breathe. But glaucoma, a lot of the time, you don't have symptoms. There's one kind of glaucoma, a glaucoma attack or closed angle glaucoma, where you can have severe pain or nausea or headache. But most of the time, there's really no symptoms at all, and someone has to tell you that you have it for you to really know. So here's Where's Waldo, right? And if you were looking at this picture, you would just kind of look at it and walk on, unless you knew that you really had to look for him. And you find him all the way in there, and he's really hard to see, and he's all disguised. And that's kind of how glaucoma can be sometimes. You really have to know what to look for, and you have to be, be sure that your doctor is actually checking for the things that go along with glaucoma. A regular glasses check doesn't always check for glaucoma. So what are the things that we look at? So your pupils, they react to light. If someone shines a bright light, you kind of feel that feeling where your eyes are, are kind of strained. That's your pupils constricting. And the way that your pupils constrict can be a sign of glaucoma in one eye versus another. So let's say if in your, uh, let's say if uh, both eyes constrict to light, that's a good sign that both optic nerves are working well. But let's say you shine a light, and in one of the eyes, the, eye, the pupil doesn't constrict. It actually dilates. That might be a sign that the nerve of the eye is not working well. So that's the first thing that we look at in an exam. Now, as you all may have heard, glaucoma can affect your central vision or your peripheral vision. So what everyone can do, you can actually cover one eye and kind of just look and see, all right, well, I can't really see my finger. I'm looking straight ahead. But here's my finger. Now I can see it. And you can do it from the other way. You do it from the side. OK, well, I can kind of see it here. And that's a way where some people can kind of test what your visual field is in, a, in kind of a, you know, a crude way, but your own way. Now, you guys have all, I'm sure, had the visual field test at the doctor's office, which is called an automated visual field, where you're in the machine, you're, you're pressing the buttons every time you see the light. And there's different kinds made by different companies, and these are the names of some of the companies. So you guys are, I'm sure you love this test. You're all excited to take it every time you come. It's not easy. I took it myself, and I, I did not like it. But you know, you're in the machine, and the, the machine is really trying to test which points can you see, which points can you not see. And that's much better than us kind of looking at our finger this way. So. so here's an example of one of the printouts that you get. So when you do this test, the doctor will take a look at the printout. There's a lot of different numbers up here and all of that, but basically you can get a big, a kind of a glance here, mostly white there. There's a black spot there, and that's the normal blind spot that we all have, and that's normal. And so this visual field test, mostly white. There's no kind of black spots here. So we could say that this person does not have a visual field abnormality. They can still have glaucoma, though, because you can have glaucoma without this being abnormal, but this gives us a clue. Now here's an example of someone who might have some points here. So you can see here there's some points that are abnormal. We see them on the different types of, these are all different calculations that are done. And here's someone who has a little bit even more. There's more of that black there. And that becomes more concerning, and especially the patterns we look at. The doctors are trained to look at different patterns of the black spots. So this might be someone with some kind of early, more mild glaucoma, and that might be someone with more moderate glaucoma. Now this one doesn't look good at all, right? It's all blacked out. And this might be 
from someone who has severe glaucoma, but other things in the eye can cause this too. A bad cataract can make your visual field all black, or you know you couldn't see the light because you have a really, really bad, bad dry eye or something. So the doctor really has to know what they're looking for. Now this is interesting too because this was one patient's one eye and this was the patient's other eye. So you can have a really a big difference between the eyes as well. Now this one looks not so good, right? There is a lot of uh, black here and here. But your doctor has to be aware that there are different patterns and this pattern is actually not consistent with glaucoma at all. This is actually someone who had a stroke and a stroke in the back of the eye can make the visual field test look funny or look uh, you know, abnormal in different ways. So uh, the doctor has to be you know, kind of really looking at the patterns of the glaucoma. Now here's the eyeball, right? And we focus a lot on the front part of the eye when we're doing our glaucoma test initially. So there's lots of different parts of the eye, but when you look, we look at the front part here, and this is the lens. This is the cataract lens here that many people have heard of, and the iris right here. What we look at is certainly what the front looks like. The conjunctiva and sclera, which is the white part of the eye, is there redness there? Are there any abnormal blood vessels? Some kinds of glaucoma can give us that. And then we go through all the different parts of the eye to see there are certain types of glaucomas that affect all these parts of the eye. So we, when we do the examination, we check for all of these little signs that we, we, you might have glaucoma. Going back here, now this is called the angle of the eye. So this is where the cornea, which is the front of the eye, meets the iris, which is the colored part of your eye. And you can see it looks like an angle. And that's the drain system of the eye. That's the gutter system. The fluid that gets made in the eye gets drained out here. So maybe some people have heard of narrow angles. And narrow angles is when this, this uh, angle isn't a nice V like this, but it might almost be closed shut. And that person may, not, may be at risk for an attack because that angle is too small to drain the fluid. And so that's why we look at something called gonioscopy. Gonioscopy is when we get up all in your business and we put this contact lens right up on your eye. Have you guys had that? It's not so comfortable. But what we're looking there is this is to check is the angle open? Is the gutter system of the eye draining the fluid like it should? When we put that contact lens on your eye, this is what we see. We can see different structures, these different black, brown and white stripes give us a clue as to whether or not the angle of the eye is open or closed. And that tells us, you know, open angle glaucoma, closed angle glaucoma. It gives us some clues into that. That lens has mirrors in it that can also show us other things like blood vessels. So some people with diabetes can develop blood vessels in the front of the eye that block off the angle and cause glaucoma or make you predisposed to get glaucoma. And so we check for all these things when we do that examination. Now some people may have also you've no experienced where they come up and they kind of touch your eye with another instrument. This is measuring the thickness of your cornea, another way that we can diagnose glaucoma. We know that people with thinner corneas are at higher risk. And of course, pressure, right? Everyone has had the uh, blue light coming up close, and this helps us check the eye pressure. And we know, like I said before, that pressure is very important, and you guys all know that when we come in, we want to know what your pressure is, and we give you drops to lower the pressure. And it can vary, though. It's important to know that within a day, someone with glaucoma might have a pressure that's 10 points different in the morning and at night. And so it varies, and we just have to look at the trend over time. Um, but people with pressures kind of over 30, we are pretty sure we need to treat them. And under that, you know, we, we take it patient by patient to see who needs to be treated. Now, you may wonder what we look at. So you, this is what you're seeing. You're seeing this blue light coming close, and we see these, these lines in here, and we line them up, and then that's how we get the pressure reading. Here's also another pressure. This is a tonopen pressure. A lot of you, if you've had the screening today, it's a little pen that taps the eye, and it's used a lot with uh, the vets. That's not my patient, just saying. <laughs> Okay, and then, you know, we have to look at the back of the eye. So we looked at the front, we looked at the angles, we did everything there, but it's very important to also look in the back of the eye. Usually this does require dilation drops, so when you're blurry for a couple hours. The people with narrow angles, we don't dilate them because it can increase their eye pressure. So if some of you have narrow angles, you may not have had this, but most people will dilate the eye and take a look at the back of the eye, and these are the different drops we use. And this is what we see when we look in the back of the eye when we're trying to diagnose glaucoma. This is the optic nerve that we're all talking about. This is kind of looking at it head on, and these are all the blood vessels, and this is the retina. So this is a pretty healthy looking eye, and we, uh, we try to compare our patient size compared to what a normal looking eye would look. Now here's someone that looks pretty healthy, and I want you to notice, so this is the entire optic nerve. 
But you see this white little area here? That's called the cup. And then on this patient here, here's the outside, but then that cup's really big. And someone with glaucoma is more likely to have a bigger cup. So that's what we measure, we take pictures of, and we want to see if this is changing, then we know that someone may be more uh, likely to be developing glaucoma, unlike someone here who looks to have more of a smaller cup or a more healthy optic nerve. And then finally, this is a special picture that you guys, some of you may be having. It's called an OCT test. And this kind of helps us. It's more, it's more like an advanced picture of what we, what we just saw. And this actually analyzes how thick the tissue is. And we can see kind of really tiny, little, tiny micrometers, small little changes in the optic nerve. And so someone here who has um, all the green here means that their measurements are falling into what's considered normal, whereas someone with glaucoma may have some measurements that are falling outside the normal range and that gives us more of a clue that this patient might be developing glaucoma. And someone like this may still have a normal visual field, so we have to put all these different pieces together to decide and diagnose glaucoma. This is why this is not very straightforward. So it's very difficult to diagnose in summary, but there are many different techniques and examinations that we do to put the whole picture together. Um, and also, we also think about you know, your history. Does, your, does it run in your family? What's the race? What's your, are, are there other health problems? And certainly age. All of these all play into someone having the diagnosis of glaucoma. Um, and you certainly need a very thorough exam to be diagnosed with glaucoma. And sometimes it's not easy. and it needs, You need several different exams, and it, sometimes it takes a, a year or two to figure, really figure out if you have it or not. Um, so that's all I have for you. Are there any questions? Yes. For someone that's diagnosed with narrow angles but has not been diagnosed with glaucoma and the treatment is laser, yes. do those angles go back into shape or? That's a great question. So the question was with someone who has narrow angles but has not yet been diagnosed with glaucoma, um, the treatment for narrow angles is a laser. Uh, that's actually to prevent uh, a glaucoma attack. And in most people, after doing the laser, the narrow angles do kind of open up and get back to the normal shape. But there are some people where you can have the laser done and they don't go back in the normal shape, but we still think we're preventing that glaucoma attack. So in the small group of people where it doesn't go back into shape, it's still worth it to do the laser, but they just need to be monitored to make sure that, you know, and everybody needs to be monitored to make sure that they're not getting more narrow over time. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions? Other questions? Yes. Uh, Good question. Uh, when we do that laser, the question was, does the hole close up after you do the iris? Uh, iridotomy, it's called the hole in the iris. In most people, it does stay open, but there's some group of people, kind of like the other group, that where that hole wants to close back up again because you're a great healer, uh, your body is kind of trying to heal up what we did to it. And so in some people, we do have to repeat that over time to open up the hole again. Very, it varies, and some people can close up within a few weeks, and some people, 10 years later, they need it redone. It's very different. No other questions. Right, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.